All right, here's the train stand we built. Uh, you can see the wheel is sitting on the stand. We built this board to mount all the other hardware that we're using on it. Um, we'll start over on the left-hand side, a full walkthrough. We got this motor and roller here is actually spinning the wheel. Uh, that's hooked up to our board to control where we position the wheel. We have this flashlight here with a laser pointer. It's hitting a photo transistor on the other side, and every time the one of the spokes passes in front of it, it breaks the beam, and that's how we're telling. That's how we're able to tell what spoke we're at. Um, on either side of the wheel, on this side, we have an encoder and follower. The encoder just tells us which way we're spinning, forwards or backwards. We could use the motor to do this too, but we had some problems where. The motor was slipping on the wheel, especially when it was changing directions really quickly. So we added the encoder, and um, now it adds a little bit of redundancy to the system and um, fix a problem we're having where the motor would be spinning one way, but the wheel was still going the other because of momentum. And on this side, just a follower, which might be hard to tell, but this beam here pivots around this point and following it all the way back. This device here is potentiometer, and when the wheel is at a true, it'll move either this way or the other way, which shakes the end of this beam hooked up to the potentiometer, and the potentiometer just gives us a resistance based on how far it's been moved. And this is how we're able to tell whether the wheel is at a true or not. The reason we mounted it onto the bar you see uh, just gives us a mechanical advantage. It's four to one right now, so one millimeter displacement in the wheel gives us four millimeters at the potentiometer and just gives us a larger range to work with. So we'll turn it on. And a couple of steps, you might have missed it. It goes pretty quick. Starting from the beginning, first thing it does is cycle through all the spokes, take measurements at each, we just have it outputting everything for debugging purposes and finally finds the worst one and goes to it. You can see right there at the bottom, the worst spoke was spoke two. Actually, the worst spoke is spoke one. And you can see down at the bottom, we get all the way to one and it tells you what to do. Uh, assuming we had tightened or loosened it, whichever was appropriate, We'd go, it would take measurements of the whole wheel again and bring you back to the worst spoke again. In this case, we didn't change anything, so it should be the same spoke. And we're saying it spoke too, which is arbitrarily close. We don't have it down perfectly, but if we did it again, it would take measurements of the whole wheel and then find the worst spoke and go to it here. And we'll take a look. We see that. We have the same worst spoke again, number two. One more time. It's telling us the worst spoke is number two again.